Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. You guys ready to do some mixed media? I'm going to give people a couple seconds here to join, and then we will get going with some fun techniques tonight. Uh, hopefully, it's fun. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. So we're live right now on both the you, uh, Hero Arts YouTube channel and also the Mixed Media with Hero Arts Facebook group. If you haven't joined that group yet, if you're joining this live from YouTube and you love mixed media and you're on you on Facebook, I recommend you search for the Hero Arts Mixed Media with Hero Arts Facebook group and join us there. Hi, everybody. I'm seeing some people commenting now. Good to have you all here. Thank you for being here. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hopefully my name shows up this time. Nope. <laughs> it's not. I'm using StreamYard to go live. So if you're in the private Facebook group, you need to accept StreamYard for it to work. And then sometimes it still doesn't work. So sorry. <laughs> it's it's silly. It's um, anyway, I don't want to make a big deal of it. So hi, everybody. My name is Libby and I work for Hero Arts and I'm having so much fun with our new mixed media group. And I hope you guys are too. So our goal in this new group is to go live every Sunday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll rotate through who goes live. It was Lydia last week kicking it off and she was fantastic. And there is a um, replay available for that if you missed it. Um, let's see. If you guys are the only one who can't see names is me. I see somebody saying I can see your name. It's only my interface where I can't see because I'm in this program called StreamYard to do this live. And so I'm the only one who can't see. Everybody else can see wherever you're watching from. But there are people watching in two different places. All right, so we're going to do our, our lives in the group every Friday. No, 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 no. Every Sunday at 8 p.m. My brain is very mixed up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and then we're going to do a challenge on the Tuesday after. So this coming Tuesday, Lee and Holly in the Facebook group will do a little mini Technique Tuesday challenge based on something that I do tonight. And they will challenge everybody in the group to do the technique. Um, if you are inspired by it and you want to just post, even if you're not on Facebook, you post in Instagram or whatever, our hashtags we like to use are hashtag um, uh, hero, hero Arts Mixed Media, hashtag Hero Arts Mixed Media, and hashtag Hero Arts. Can you guys hear? It's thundering here right now. So hopefully we don't lose any power or anything crazy like that tonight. I see Brianne in the comments. Hi, Brianne. And I think I heard that Lee is here as well. She might be my mystery no-name person. Um, and then maybe Holly is here as well. They're the three people who run our Facebook group. So thank you to them for all the work they're doing in the group. But without any further ado, I'm going to switch to my overhead camera and get our technique going so we can have a fun Sunday night. If you want to try this along with me, you're more than welcome to. I'm not I'm not trying to like, I didn't warn you guys what I'm using. So it'd be kind of hard to keep up. Maybe, I don't know. But if you want to pull out some stuff and play, play along, that's great as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my overhead camera. There we go. And as you can see, I have my palette knife out. Oop, that was my dog. She's freaking out because we have a storm going on. Um, I have a bunch of bold prints that I picked. That's what uh, Hero Arts calls our red rubber cling background stamps. They're called bold prints. And then I also have some of our hero paste. I have both my regular hero paste here as well as the gold. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a technique I've done a couple times now. And every time I share a card I've done with it, people are like, whoa, what did you do? So I thought I'd go ahead and show it. And it's something that I actually learned from Vicki Booten. If you guys love mixed media and you don't follow Vicki Booten, I highly recommend you do. She goes live all the time and shows amazing amazing mixed media techniques and she's so much fun. So if you don't know Vicky, check her out, B-O-U-T-I-N. But what we're doing, as I know some of you have seen this card so many times, but this is what we're going to show tonight, is pressing a bold print stamp into Hero Paste while it's still wet so that you can get this amazing, amazing texture in your card or in your project or in whatever it is you're working on. So can you see all that beautiful texture in there? So that is what we're going to do. And then here's one that I shared just a couple weeks ago when we launched our mixed media group. And I shared this on the Hero Arts blog and on social media. And again, I just pressed a, a bold print. This was a text bold print into some Hero Paste. And you can see what happened here. This one I also use sprays on and all kinds of funness. funness. <laughs> this one I use some of our Hero Wax over the texture once it was completely dry. So without any further ado, let's try this technique. And whoever just said they're late, you're not late. I basically just started. You're all good. But if you do come in a little late, um, 
this will be available available for replay, so we're all good. All right, so I wanted to show, this is the bold print that I used on, let's pull these back out again, this one. That's how I got that cool round texture on here. It was with this bold print. And this one's called Rough Dot. I put my names on the back of it. And then this one was with this from our recent release, Positive Script Bold Print. And you can, you can see my residue on there. Uh, I didn't clean it up super, super good. But the thing about this that you want to make sure when you're doing this technique is that you clean your bold prints right away. I'm going to say this many times tonight. But you do not want that um, paste to dry on your, on your stamp. It will kind of mess it up for you. And once this stuff dries, it's really hard. So you want to make sure you're cleaning as you go with this technique for sure. Just like if you're using Hero Paste on a stencil, you also want to clean right away. It's the same kind of idea. Um, this one, I don't necessarily just throw it into a bin of water, though, because I don't want to mess up the cling material on the back that it has an adhesive holding it on. So I do just take a, a baby wipe and maybe some spray and a towel and just clean it up really quick as I go. And then after the live, I might go to my sink and really give it a good scrub. So hi, everybody that's joining. Hello, hello. I'm seeing lots of names going by. Nice to see you all here tonight. So let me just show you some other ones I pulled out um, that I think makes fun texture inside, um, you know, along with Hero Paste. This one's called Zigzag Texture. You can see the little zigzags all over this one. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's been around for a while. This one's called Etched Winter Swirl. And it has kind of a almost a starry night feel to it. And that would make some really fabulous texture. This one I love. This is one of my all-time favorites, and it is called Circular Grid. And actually, let me see. I have, yeah, here's one that I did with it, actually. You can see the texture you get when you press that stamp into your paste. All right. And actually, here's one I did with the texture, the zigzag that I showed a minute ago. And let me just show you this. I'm just going to be all over the place tonight, I think. This is my bin where I just, whenever I'm playing and making backgrounds, I just throw them in this bin and then I have it to make cards with later on. Um, so just a little FYI on that. Um, here's another one I pulled out that I thought could be fun. This is called Abstract Frames. So Hero Arts has all kinds of different bold prints. Some of them are very graphic, like you know pictures of apples or pictures of whatever it is, um, like a little... Um, actual thing you might color in like a little image of something and then some are just really cool patterns and for this technique i think i'm mostly going for the cool patterns because i think that's what will make the coolest background this one's called abstract ceiling pattern but, you know you could go through your um stash and see what you have and here this one is called overlapping hexagon hexagons bold prints now wendy's asking a question that i i knew i knew absolutely that somebody was going to ask is will this work with acrylic stamps well first of all uh clear stamps we don't call them acrylic stamps i don't mean to be correcting you wendy but we don't call them acrylic because they're actually not acrylic stamps they're photopolymer acrylic stamps are the the cheaper ones that you'd get from china ours are phot photopolymer which is made to transfer ink and i would not um actually uh i don't think i would do my clear stamps with this technique i think they are not as sturdy as red rubber. And so I just do this with my red rubber cling stamps. I think you certainly could get technique, get technique, get texture with an acrylic stamp. I would just be a little bit more worried about ruining my stamp with it. Um, let's see, Mary's asking if cleaning in the sink is bad for the plumbing on Hero Arts Paste. Well, you know, I've never thought about that. I guess if you're putting big chunks of it down the sink, it's probably not the greatest idea. But I, as you see, when I clean these up, the main thing I do is I take a baby wipe and get most of it up. And then um, if there's like a little bit of residue left, that's what I would do over the sink. But that is a good question. I don't I don't want you to mess up your plumbing because of me. <laughs> so yeah, I like I prefer my red rubber, rubber cling. I see Holly's asking the same question. Um, it's just my preference. And I am seeing on my end that my video keeps hanging up. Are you guys seeing that? I'm just curious. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it's thundering. We have a storm going on here and I'm wondering if it's messing up my my feed at all. So I hope not, but hopefully it's just on my end. All right. So let's get started. And what I'm working on today, you could do this on any paper that you want. I'm using this Hero Arts watercolor paper. I like it because it's nice and thick and can take a little bit more of a beating. It's the same thing that we recommended using when we did our mixed media stamp along. And um, you could use any kind of heavy duty, like you could use um, any other watercolor paper, you could use Bristol paper, 
And look at this, guys. I, I did my nails specifically for this, and I already messed them up. <laughs> Anyway, um, you can also use regular cardstock, but I'm going to just tell you what happens with this technique. Okay, I'll just show you on this card. Look at how lumpy bumpy it is. If you are a perfectionist that likes everything to be super smooth, <laughs> I will tell you that the way this dries on your cardstock or on your paper, it can, you know, it can cause it to get lumpy and weird. And so if you don't love that, you might not love this technique, but I don't care. I just put that on a on a card and say, oh, well, it's lumpy. It's got some texture. It's mixed media. I'm all good with that. <laughs> all right. So I have a bunch of this um, watercolor paper that I cut into A2 panels. And I'm going to get out a little craft mat to work on, just a little surface here, which this is a mat also, but I don't like to do all my mixing and stuff right on it. And let me just start. Okay. I'm just going to start by using some regular old white hero paste on here and we'll give it a try and see what happens. And when I am using my hero wax, another, or not hero wax, hero paste, another thing I like to do is I put some uh, press and seal right on the little bin. Um, I say this with all your mediums that you get, whether it's hero arts or anybody else's, you need to use them. If you don't use them, you'll lose them because they are not made to last forever. They will dry out over time. And so just to try to help with that situation, I just put a little press and seal over it. And then I just screw the lid on right over that. And that just helps to keep it as, you know, airtight or whatever you want to call it as possible. And then here is my regular hero paste. We do have hero paste, just this regular white hero paste. There's also a glitter hero paste, uh, gold, which is another one I'm going to use tonight, and a pearl. So there's all different kinds of hero paste. But this is kind of the original. I'm just mixing it around a little. I'm going to get a little bit of it on the back of my palette knife. And I love my Hero Arts palette knife. It's nice and heavy duty. It's nice metal with a wooden handle. So it's going to last a long time. Um, some of the plastic ones get a little beat up along the edges and, you know, they're plastic. I like to use something that's uh, more sustainable and it's going to last a long time. And I am just wiping this or spreading this, I guess, all over my cardstock. I'm not worried about it being super smooth because I am going for texture here. So that is totally okay. All right, I'm just kind of cleaning my knife off in there. I'm going to put my little seal back over it. And then for this one, let's go ahead and try that one that I love, which is the um, rough dot. And now before I put this down into the paste, what I do is I take a little spray bottle of water and I give it a quick little spritz spritz. I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to spray it right here. Could you hear that? Spritz spritz spritz. Just a little bit of water on there helps it to, you know, helps keep it from completely sticking. And then I'm just going to press it right down in there. Whoever loves the favorite palette knife, I don't know who you are because I can't see your, your name where I'm at. So if you guys could, if you could tell me, I'd love to know. I'm, I'm guessing who it might be with the, saying they love the palette knife, but I'm just not 100% sure. Oh my gosh, you guys, so good. So good. I mean, what? Look at that. I love it. I just sounded like Tim and I didn't mean to when I said the what? <laughs> so good. I guess I watched too much Tim Holt yesterday because I have his, his mannerisms in my brain. I, I thought it was you, Maria, when you said you love the metal palette knife. I know it's one of your boyfriends. <laughs> so isn't this amazing? I mean, just look at that texture. And it's not perfect. It's not like a perfect imprint of that, like if you had stamped it. But that's okay because all we're doing is going for all this amazing texture. So that is so good. All right. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And we'll do our next thing. But what's the most important thing I said tonight? Clean your stamp right away. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. So I do not want that paste drying on there. And I'll show you the next fun thing that we're going to do here. And this one has little grooves that it's getting down into. So this one I'm definitely probably going to have to spend a little minute on cleaning. I do that. And then I grab a towel. Now I'm remembering this is a harder one. This is why I took this one to the sink <laughs> when I did it before because it gets way down in there. So I'm doing my best to get as much off of there as I can so that it's not going to be a problem. But I'm going to use this stamp again. So we'll go ahead and... No, I'm not going to use this one again. So what I'm going to do just to try to keep it from uh, getting too messed up before this ends and I can go really clean it is I'm going to... Oops, I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm just going to really spray those areas with a lot of water so that they're kind of soaking while I'm 
waiting with this one. I'm going to put a baby wipe right over it. And I'm going to set that aside so that I can go clean it up right after this live. All right. All right. So now while we're doing our white hero paste, I'm going to show you another fun thing. Oh, the stamp scrubber is a fantastic idea. If I had it right here at my desk, that you're right. That would be a good way to clean that. That's a really brilliant idea. Let me see if I even have it here to show you guys what we're talking about. This is not it. No, I'm not going to show you that one. That's bad. Uh, no, I don't have it. Lori, my sister-in-law is here. Don't worry about trying to find it because I have no idea where it's at. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take. Oh, she just, <laughs> just got a little darker in here, but we're all good. <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to take a little bit of Hero Wax. Not, I keep saying that, guys. Hero Paste, not Wax. Yeah, that's not the right thing, but thank you. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to show you another fun thing I like to do. Yeah. Toothbrush would work to clean that stamp for sure, Holly. Yeah. That's another great idea. That's what I would do at the sink because I'd use something to really get down in there. Um, yes. Whoever just asked that, I did put press and seal on the top of my paste just to help keep it stay good as long as possible. Some plastic wrap, whatever kind you want to use. All right. So now the next thing I want to do is I was thinking of making a holiday card tonight. And I will show you um, a couple things I tried. First, you can add all kinds of things to your Hero paste to color it. These are two of my liquid watercolors. I have the strawberry and the neon red. And I'm going to save you from seeing what happens with those because I found out earlier they're kind of not, they don't work as well as I'd hoped. This is what the strawberry looked like. <laughs> can you see that? Oh, there we go. This is the strawberry. I don't know why, but it came out orange when I added it to the hero paste. So my point of all this is to tell you, you have to experiment when you're trying to find like a certain color to, to color your hero paste. And this is the neon red and it turned out kind of pink. So I love these colors, but they just weren't like the Christmas red I was hoping for. Um, so we'll come back to that. So what I did instead is I got out some of my reinkers. And so I have both the cranberry and the cherry reinkers. These are for our core inks, just a reink. Yeah, it is weird to get orange. I don't understand why that happened. <laughs> I was very surprised when it happened. I don't know, maybe there was something left on my map, but I don't think so because it looked it looked more red when I was mixing it. And then when I put it on and it started to dry, I'm like, that is totally orange. Okay. So these turned out pretty much the same, even though the ink pads themselves are quite different. These turned out a lot, you know, very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and just do cranberry to show you. Now, when you're adding the uh, color to your Hero Wax, you want to add enough so you get the color you want. I mean, look at that. Ooh, pretty. But you don't want to add so much that you're watering down your Hero Wax because it really, you guys, why do I keep saying wax? Hero Paste, because it will change the consistency of it. I mean, you can already see it's a little bit different than it was originally. I probably put a little too much in this one. Um, so you want to put enough, but not too, too much of the color when you're doing this. All right. So this is the color I'm getting. And red is always a hard color to actually achieve the, the true true red, um, Christmas red. So this is, you know, it doesn't look like it would on the ink pad. It looks different, but it is still a red. So we're going with it. And I'm taking one of my um, panels again. I'm going to go ahead and smear some of this on, just like we did before. And of course, the amount of ink reinker that you add to it is going to determine um, what color you get. All right, so now I have all this paste that is still just sitting here, and I don't like to let it go to waste. So I could either get another panel ready to smush into, or I just clean off my palette knife onto a, another piece of um, paper. And I'll use this as a receptacle of paste as I'm cleaning things up. And then that can be a different kind of background. And when I'm doing this, am I on camera? Yeah, I kind of. We'll go like this with the palette knife and do all kinds of things to really build up some fun texture in there as well. And that can be fun as well. Um, what did you use to color the paste? That was the reinker. This is our ink pad reinker. This is our core inker reinker in cranberry. And that's what I used for that. So I'm going to set this one aside to dry as well. Um, let's see, finding a place in all my mess to put it. I'm going to clean off my palette knife real quick. 
going to clean off this real quick. And I'm going to now take out one of my holiday. So I said a little teaser in the group that I was going to show you some of the new holiday stuff. And that is what I'm going to use for this one. I'm going to, I think I'm going to play with this one, which, oops, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> but this is one that's coming out for the holidays and it's really cool. So again, I'm going to spritz it. And then I'm just going to set it down into my hero wax and see what happens. Clean that off real quick. Poinsettia something. Yes, <laughs> you're right, Brian. I'm using poinsettia something. And by the way, our holiday release is uh, the 24th. Look at that. I got some suds. That's different. Maybe it's because I cleaned this one earlier. You can see there's a little bit of texture in there, but I'm not super duper loving it. I'm going to set that aside and go back to my text, which I do love. And this is the Fa La La Bold Prints. It's also from the new release. And I'm going to put this one in here as well. Maybe I did too much spritzing. You want to just give it a couple of quick spritzes of the water. And this one, I'm going to try to show you something else as well. Pressing that one in. Ooh, somebody's working on ha Halloween cards. That's fun. There we go. Do you see that Fa La La, how that one really is in there? And then I'm going to take this and see if I can kind of, yeah, some of the paste that's kind of um, in the bold print, I'm going to just stamp with that in a couple places as well. I could also take it now on a fresh piece of this and rub it on. Let's see what this does. You guys, this is the thing about mixed media. If you guys watched um, Monsi during our stamp along, how many of you were at our stamp along? You know how she just like was whoo, all over the place, which was amazing. And I loved it. And by the way, she, I think, is our next live next Sunday here in the group. So watch out for that. It's going to be amazing. All right. That didn't add a whole lot of stuff on there. But, you know, you know how it is with mixed media. That can be the base of something fabulous to come. So I'm going to set that one aside as well. Now I'm going to clean my two bold prints really quick before they get messed up. And then I'm going to show you the gold because I love the gold hero paste. And then I'm going to show you some other things to kind of finish a card, I think. You guys get the idea, right? You spritz your stamp before you put it down into your paste, and then you make sure and clean up quickly after. You kind of play to see which ones give the best impression. Um, you know, there's lots of things that, lots of stamps that are going to work for this. Um, if you are very scared of ruining a stamp, don't do it. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for any ruined stamps, but I haven't ruined any yet doing this, and I've done it several times now, but, uh, you know. I don't want to be, I don't want you to come after me and say, hey, I ruined my stamp. <laughs> but I think it's fun to try it. This one, I don't think I care if some of it down in there doesn't come off completely. It's a little of this, though. <laughs> this is exciting, but also next level scary. That makes me laugh. That's how I feel about, I don't know, some other things in mixed media, too, but I think it's worth the scary. I think it's super fun, super duper fun. All right, let's get that out of the way. I feel like I want to try that. Maybe I'll try the hexagon one next because that one looks really cool. Sorry for that noise. I think that's a pretty awful noise that I'm making right now. So I'm sorry about that. But you know I need to have a clean stamp here. All right, I think that's good for now. Holly, you can do it. Come on, girl. You can do it. You're a moderator of our group. You have to have no fear when it comes to mixed media. <laughs> so look at that. Super cool. Okay, putting that aside to dry as well. And then we're going to come back to some of these that I've done and do some more things with them as soon as I get done showing you the gold. All right. So now this one I'm not coloring, so I don't need to mix anything. But I just want to show you a little bit. You can play with so many things like 
here, this is a panel where I was cleaning off, like I showed you that I cleaned off the red. This is when I mix some of our orange and pink neon liquid watercolors into Hero Paste. So you can see how those look when you mix it, mix it in. Um, this was the pink uh, neon liquid watercolor mixed in with Hero Paste. This was all the same session. So you can see I was doing these. Let's see. I did a little ink smushing with the, the neon pink liquid watercolor. But here's where I put the zigzag. And you can see on this one, I was kind of doing yellow and pink and orange of the liquid watercolor, the neons, all in there and pressing the zigzag in, cleaning up all the colors on this one. And then I also put them through a stencil. And you can see how that looks. So just a little info about mixing with um, liquid watercolors. Oh, I remember what I wanted to do. This is why I had this whole bin here. I thought I would pull out... Um, Here's another one where I was just mixing things, cleaning things. You guys see all that texture in these? So this is all the stuff that happens when I start a little session of doing this stuff. I wanted to find something to put gold on. Um, I don't know, should we go with pink? Blue, purple. How about something like this? Yeah. So I don't even know. I think I was doing some ink smushing on this one. I did some kind of splatters on it. So it's got a lot of stuff going on already. But let's just put on a little bit of Hero Paste Gold. And let's try. I think this one will work. Sometimes you need. So the ones that worked really well. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can make some thoughts about this. This is the messages that worked really well. And they have a lot of space in between. I think that kind of can help because you really get it in there to get good, um, I don't know, good pressing in when it has some space in between. Um, this one worked really well and it's tight. So I, I think the I think the hexagon will work. We're gonna give it a try. Okay, that's just me thinking. <laughs> All right, so this is the gold hero paste. And hopefully it comes through on the camera. It's a really pretty gold and it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. like a little bit of a, a sequiny, not sequiny, um, glittery look to it, but it's it's not a glitter base. It just has a little shininess to it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not explaining it very well, but just take my word for it. I'm spreading this on, covering up some of that goodness that I had put on there. And you want this to be not super thick when you're pressing it in. Uh, but not too thin that you can't get any impression, you know? It's like a, you got to find that sweet spot. Yeah, maybe like a mica. Thank you, Crafty Visage. <laughs> um, the paste comes in gold. Yes. When you get the gold, you don't have to add anything. It's just a gold paste. It's fabulous. Like I said, we have gold. We have pearl. We have the regular white that I was coloring. We have a glitter paste. Um, is that all of them? I think so. Oh, and we have a new silver one that I have not actually tried yet, but I think it, it is either in stock now or it will be very soon. And I can't wait to try that one as well. We have to do a better cleaning up of my palette knife later, but that's okay. All right, so let's try the hexagon and see what happens. Okay. This is a first timer for me. I haven't tried this one yet. Yeah, you definitely need gold if you didn't know it exists. It's it's one of my favorites. I think it's so pretty. Okay. Oh yes, you guys. Oh. Oh yes. That one is cool. That one is super duper cool. This just gives me Maria vibes. Maria, I don't know if you're still here, but have you tried it and have you done this before? Because that makes that just makes me think of you. <laughs> <laughs> so that one was good. That one I like a lot. So let's keep the, I'm going to keep my hexagons out. And if you guys love this one, it's called Overlapping Hexagons, Gold Print. <laughs> so this, I just, I love this exploration of just pulling things out and trying them and just seeing what you get. Um, you know, I did, this makes it sound like I didn't prepare it all for this live and I actually did. <laughs> I just didn't try all the different things that I pulled out just now. All right, I'm going to put a little spritz and baby wipe on this one too so I can clean it really good later because I don't want it to mess up. And that'll be for later. Oops, 
just my whole thing. Okay, I put another one. I don't know. Right here. So that has fun a fun beginning of who knows what's going to come next with that. And that's another thing I love about mixed media is I don't know where I'm going when I start. I just start doing it and then it just it has a mind of its own and it takes me places, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so let me pull out some that I did previously to get ready for this. So this is that um, the the red with it's a really deep, weirdish orangish <laughs> crimson. This is with the cranberry into the um, hero paste. Oops, there's two here. I was like, why is this one so thick? And that was my clean off one. These are ones I did earlier. So they're already pretty much dry. The hero paste does dry relatively quick. That's why I like to get it done, get it cleaned up quickly. Those are the ones I didn't love as much, the weird colors. And then there's the fa la la. And here's pressing that, that um, poinsettia into this one. Okay. So I think I'm going to make something with this fa la la one. I think I'll set these aside for now. All right, all right. So what I did before, like on this card, is I did a lot of things on this card. But I did some ink blending around the edges. And then I also did a little bit of watercolor with the neon liquid watercolors. And I was thinking of making this into more of a holiday card. I think I'm going to add some spray like I did on this one because I love how that looks. So I think I want to do greens. I think I'm going to use my green, spring green and gold spray because it's right here. Although I know that we're out of stock on that one at Hero. So if you want it after I do it, you won't, you'll be out of luck for a little bit, but you can always do the notify me on it. And so first, I am going to do some kind of ink blending on here. Let's see what inks I have handy at my desk. Green Hill seems like a good choice. And then I grab a little green ink blending brush. Yes, highly <laughs> experimenting and playing is the journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And I don't know how this is going to look. It may end up being a hot mess. But here's the thing about mixed media, in my opinion. You can either, um, if, you, if you feel like you're achieving a hot mess, <laughs> you can leave it and come back to it later. And you might see it with new eyes and think, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was when I was live on Facebook. <laughs> or you can take parts of it and die cut it or cut it apart and give it new life. And then it might become a whole new thing that you love. You can use it on a different card. You can put it into a journal or on a page. You know, there's just so many things that you can do to um, kind of give your, your creation new life. So another thing that I should point out as I'm doing this that I could do if I wanted to, you can kind of see over in this end that as I'm ink blending, I can get the green down into the fa -la las if I wanted to. I don't think I want to over the whole thing. I kind of want that white to show through. You could pick another ink color and put it down in there. You know, lots of things you could do that way as well. Now, another thing I could do as I'm playing here is I could take, let's try this. I have my um, green, let's see, green neon chartreuse liquid watercolor here. And I'm going to try to do a little sm smooshing in that and see what we get. So I'm just putting that down, maybe adding a little more water to it. I don't know if this is going to be good or not, guys, but we're going to try it. And I was thinking holiday with this, but I'm going kind of crazy, crazy colors with this. But you can have a neon holiday, right? That's kind of cool. Now I could take a brush. Let's try this. Let's see. I got a brush here. I could, I think I need a little water. Let's see. Water cup. Take a little of this with my brush and maybe try flicking it on like this, making some splatters. Not getting any right now. All right, then I'll take out my drying heat tool, give it a little dry.
And again, I mentioned at the start, it gets a little lumpy bumpy, but I don't care. I think it's fun. Let's introduce another color into this so it's not just all green. Um, okay, here's another thing I just can't do. <laughs> when this is here, I don't wanna just wipe it up because it's, it's so pretty, I wanna keep it. And so that's when I take out another piece of paper and I start picking it up like this. You know, I mean, look at that. I can't just let that go to waste when it's so pretty. Okay, the first green ink I used was called Green Hills. Oops, where am I? You guys see me? There I am. <laughs> um, this is our old style um, lid, but now there's a Green Hills core ink. It's the same thing. That's what I ink blended with. And then the green that I smushed is our Neon Brights liquid watercolor in Neon Chartreuse. And that's what I smushed down on. And that's what I'm now picking up with my extra piece of cardstock as well, or watercolor paper, actually. All right, I'm going to give this a quick dry. Now, this is exactly what I do, guys, when I'm when I'm doing something like this and I'm just here by myself. This is how I kind of go all over the place because I don't like to waste things. And so I'll either pick up the ink like this onto a piece of watercolor paper or if it's the paste, like I said, I will put it off onto another um, piece. I'll just clean off my palette onto a piece of paper because I love to capture all that. Now we're down to the dregs. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that up. Dry this real quick. And I want to add some other color. So let's see, what else do I have here? Um, I have some blue raspberry reactive ink. This is the Hero Arts reactive ink. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that down. And again, get it wet. And let's see what this does. <laughs> I'm surprised too how well it goes together. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure when I started. I just decided to try it. All right. Now look at how that blue raspberry added a little bit of, you know, a different color to the mix. And I like that a lot as well. Then we'll go in, of course, with our panel here and add some. And you can see why I end up with a whole bin of backgrounds because this is how I make things and I end up having these backgrounds that I can pull out when I need to make a card. It's like, oh, it's a Hero Arch release. Yikes, I need to have something to make my card with. <laughs> That's 100% what I did. I said, okay, I already had this background so I can go ahead and make a card with it by just adding these messages. Or in this case, here's one that I had done the ink, um, picking up the ink just like this, just like what I just did. And then when I needed to make a card, I was able to just take a die cut and on, you know, a little acetate die cut and make a card. And so I have these backgrounds ready to go that I can just throw onto a card. All right. So here we are with this. It's a little, a little wacky, a little crazy holiday card, but I'm loving it so far. So now, like I said, I want to try some of this two-tone metallic spray to add another little bit of. Um, I just did what I told you guys not to do when I did my live the other day. These um, two-tone metallic sprays have mica in them, and we don't recommend vigorously shaking them up and down. We recommend you go like this, or you go side to side, because when you shake it up and down, you can make that mica go right up your nozzle and clog it. And so don't do what I just did, because that was silly of me. <laughs> All right, so when I spray this stuff, I like to put it in my spray box. Can you see that, how it's well sprayed. Let's see if I can do it on camera, if you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. Just put a little bit on there. Now this I'm going to want to let dry as well and see how it looks once it's dry. But you can see how that green got down in there. And it has um, the shimmer. Can you guys see the shimmer on camera? I think you'll see it better when it's dried. I'm going to go ahead and take my towel and just get some of this off the gold. That's the other thing. It's your, your card. You can edit it how you want. I just tapped some of that off so I didn't have it pooling up on my gold paste. Okay. 
And again, on this one, you can see how I really sprayed. This is the Fuchsia in Gold Two-Tone Metallic Spray. And you can see how it colored right up on the gold paste, as well as leaving that beautiful gold shimmer on the side once it was dry. Can you see that? This is pretty funky and cool. I like it a lot. All right. So I'm going to set that aside to dry a little bit. And because I wanted to go ahead and make an entire card, I have some things here that I cut out. This is from the new holiday release coming on the 24th as well. It's one of my favorite things from the new release, guys. This is called Winter Foliage Stampin' Cut XL. And it has some great messages in it for the holidays. And then these wonderful pieces of greenery and pine cones. And if Brianna is still watching, I'm sure she's getting a little bit of PTSD looking at this because I made her cut a lot of those. <laughs> I didn't make her. She she uh, helped me with some stuff, which was awesome. But she did a lot of die cutting of, of fragile little pieces. So I appreciate her for that. She's amazing. She's amazing. All right. <clears throat> so I was thinking I could build like a little spray of um, greenery and stuff on here is a focal point of my card. Now I use this crazy these crazy neon colors. So I'm not sure what colors to use to paint these. I was going to use more of our traditional greens and stuff, but now I'm thinking, well, that might be, that may not go as well. But I will show you, let's see, where did I put it? Where'd you put it, Libby? Another new thing that we're going to have in the catalog is a really fabulous new paint palette. Oh, here it is. It's just a little plastic paint palette, but I love it because it has all these wells. It has what, eight, nine, 10, 11 wells for liquid watercolor. And then it has a little resting place for your brush as well. So you can just rest your brush on that little divot on either side. It says Hero Arts on it. <laughs> so that, that just makes me happy that we finally have something to use with our liquid watercolors. That's coming on January, or January, my goodness, August 24th as well. And I'm sorry if I'm missing um, questions. Somebody asked what gold paste. This is the gold paste that I used, the gold hero paste. It's one of my favorites. Um, somebody said, ooh, hi, everyone. Libby, you did your nails for us. I'm not sure who said that, but yes, I did them, and then I already messed them up. Look at that, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the greenery. So pretty. Yeah, Brienne is amazing. So thankful for her. Hot pink and hot green. Ooh, Lee, let's go for it, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Hot pink and hot green. So we have our chartreuse that we used a little bit ago. Somebody just yelled my name. Hi. <laughs> I'm using StreamYard, so I can't see everybody's name. So if I'm saying hi and I don't know who you are, if you want to tell me who you are, who's yelling my name, I'd love to know. We can use some of the hot pink. Um, here's our color palette of neons, if you're curious. I'll get a little bit of our other green, which is the neon green. Um, what else might we want to add? Maybe I'll just add a little bit of the neon red as well. I might want that with the pink. And I think I will use a brown for this, the pine cone. So let me grab that from my regular liquid watercolors. I have cocoa. Let's do a little cocoa. And I'm, I'm honestly putting a little more in this tray than I need because a little bit of these liquid watercolors goes a really long way. Um, let's just try a little bit of terracotta just to see. I might want a little blue too. Let me grab uh, jungle, jungle mist <laughs> just because it sounds exciting. Okay. So let's grab a paintbrush here. And I probably want to, well, I have my towel. That'll work. I'll use this one that I was using earlier. <laughs> 200, you're fine. I don't think you are fine, <laughs> Brienne, but you're amazing. You're amazing. I scarred you for life. <laughs> All right, so this is how I love to do die cuts. I do this often um, in our release that we had last Monday. Uh, I, die, I die cut the mountains that we had in our new 
my monthly hero kit and I watercolored those pieces, the mountains and trees and everything. So this is kind of my one of my go-to things. I love doing watercoloring on die cut pieces. So I just die cut them out of um, watercolor paper. And the way you really, I'm, I'm not an expert at watercoloring, first of all, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a watercolorist who knows things. <laughs> I just, I put some paint on and I let it dry and then I go in with a little more paint to try to give it some depth and dim dimension. And that's how I do it. So that's like coat one for my little pine cones. Um, let's see, we'll do this one. We'll start with the chartreuse on this little guy here. And sometimes I do it on a piece of um, paper towel rather than a slick surface like this craft mat, because then the extra that I'm getting all over the place kind of absorbs into the paper towel and I'm not transferring it between the pieces if I don't want to. Let's go ahead and do these two the same. So I'll get this one the same um, chartreuse. Now the thing about this is I don't overthink it basically. You know, I don't, you can see I'm just kind of going fast. I'm just putting color down. I mean, people who take their time do amazing job. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that if that's your jam, but for me, the way I do it, I just like to, to get some color on there, move on to the next one and, and keep, keep going quick. Um, let's go ahead and do these. I might skip this one. I'm not sure. I kind of broke it as you can see, but I thought it would still work even though it's a partial piece. So on these, I want to keep the um, berries free from green because I want them to be the hot pink. Did get a little green on that one, <laughs> even though I told you not to. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this here as well. That yellow is very, well, it's, it's chartreuse. It's a greenish, yellowish, yellowish green. Add a little more water to that. Um, yeah, I'm never precise, Betsy. <laughs> precise is not me. That's why I love mixed media, honestly. Okay. Can you see how that's all coming together? Let's go ahead and add some more brown to our pine cones. Like maybe pick one side and make it a little darker on one side. One thing I don't worry about is getting messy fingers. I don't mind those at all, but some people I know do. A little terracotta action on there. If I'm getting a harsh edge I don't love, like right now on that, I'll go in with some water. Oops, that's too much water. Think about watercolor, too much water, you just dab it. And then I forgot to... <laughs> Try my brush a little after saying it was too much, but you know, whatever. Okay. Um, let's go in with some of this jungle mist that I got out, but I think I'm going to want to water that down a little more. So it's pretty intense. Um, let's do that one on this one. And I totally, totally, totally um, made one of my little berries green that I didn't want to. So I'm going to see if I can kind of pick some of that off by wetting it and then dabbing it. Still going to have some green there, but that's okay. Now I'm really adding a lot, a lot of water to these as I'm painting them. So I'm not sure they'll be dry enough to put on this project to finish it while we're live, but we'll see. We'll see how it is once I'm done here. I can, I can hit them with my heat tool a little as well. Now, one thing I do when I'm watercoloring, if you're not used to watercoloring, is um, before I 
paint those berries. You know, I'm kind of not doing those yet because I don't want to do them right after I painted the green because I don't want it to completely run together. So I'm getting all the greenery done and then I'll go in and do my berries, you know, after it's pretty dry. So I don't have any sadness from having green berries, having all the green run into my pink. Okay, how are we feeling about this? Should we go ahead and make this one just full on jungle mist and see what it looks like? Ooh, too dark, too dark. Abort, abort. That might be a little too um, evergreen looking compared to my neon stuff. We'll see how it looks when it's all done. When it's all said and done. If I don't use it on this one, I have it ready to go on some other project, right? Now, if you don't like what I'm doing here, another way you can get a watercolored look on your die cut pieces is of course, put some watercolor down like a wash or something on a piece of paper, let it dry completely and then do your die cutting. And then you'd have watercolor look on your die cut pieces without having to do all this crazy um, painting that I'm doing. <laughs> but I find this process fun and I enjoy this very much. So let's see, what else? Kind of toning these down a little. I think they're just too yellow. Although I guess there's kind of a yellowy look to my panel. Let's look at this. That's gonna be kind of fun. I hope that actually stands out enough. It might be too similar. We'll see. We shall see. Yeah, seaweed for a water theme. These would be great for that. I agree on that too. So yeah, think outside your, um, you know, what your the intended purposes for your die cuts. Use them in other ways. Let's see, is that dry? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna move these, clean up my background a little bit because I have a lot of paint on this panel. This guy's just so, I'm gonna put him aside. He's really wet. By the way, do any of you ever use these and think, oh, it's so pretty. I need to save this for a project as well. Uh, my sister-in-law's in here with me now. She knows why my craft room is such a mess because I can't, I can't get rid of these things. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and start to hit this a little bit with a heat tool to try to help the process along. And then I can do my berries. And I had another idea of something I wanna do on this as well. Let me find my tweezers to help hold these. Ouch, I just poked myself. There we go. My pine cones are slowly running away from me. We'll have to see when this is done. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm gonna love this or not, but we'll audition it, see what we think of it. And then I might change it up a little. We shall see. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add some pink berries onto my little poly. By the way, just so you know, I don't think my mat loved me doing the heat tool directly on it. It's feeling a little bit bubbled up now. Just, just an FYI. Look at that pink. This is going to pop on the panel. I think this is good. I like this. The other things I think may blend in too much, but we'll see. If you guys have any ideas of um, things you think I should do, I'll go ahead and shout them out. Oh, Brienne's shouting Lori. I'm not sure which, which, oh, my sister-in-law. <laughs> Brienne met Lori when we all went to um, Simon Says Create. So yes, that is the same Lori, Brienne. I thought she was shouting out somebody in the, in the comments. And I'm like, oh no, my person's sitting right here. By the way, Brienne, she's doing what you sometimes have to do. I'm making her do all the die cutting and stuff this week. <laughs> 
it's, it's amazing she still comes to visit me with all the, the, the work I make her do when she's here. So I'm just adding some dabs of the red, um, you know, whatever, neon liquid watercolor. We'll see if I regret it because that pink is so good. I hope I'm not like messing up the pink, but I, I think it's making it look kind of 3D and cool. This one down here, I may just chop off because I got so much green into the berry. It's not looking as cool as the others, but we'll see. That's another thing with your die cuts. You can chop them if you need to take a piece off that isn't doing it for you. Yes to the pink berries. Glad Holly likes those. I think I love my pine cones. I don't know. Should I add anything more to those? you guys think? I think those are looking pretty cool. Um, do you ever stamp the background stamps and then cut up hot pink poinsettia would be great on green and gold? Yes. That's a great idea too. <clears throat> I wonder if I could, let's see, did I do a pink earlier of that poinsettia, that graphic poinsettia background? Um, no, I just had the orange the weird orange. <laughs> um, I had an idea, but nope. Okay, I really like these and I really like those. The, these I'm not sure about. Um, what could we do? Should I just add more green to them, I wonder? Um, let me hold these up so you guys can see how they're looking as well. Those look pretty cool too. So we can go, no, we almost need that other greenery since I'm, I'm doing pine cones, don't we? But that, I don't know if that goes at all with that though. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I like that with it. Okay. So the other thing, I'm going to let these dry for another second, and then we'll see about putting this together and if we like it or not. I'm, I'm not loving what I did on these. You guys, how can I fix these? Oh, I remember what I was going to do. Okay. So I thought another fun thing I could do on these. I don't know if I would do it on all. I might not. I might wait and see if I like the first ones before I mess up everything. Is I'm going to take a little bit of white acrylic paint. I could also use like our Hero Pearls or wax that are white, but I'm using this acrylic paint from Dina Wakely. Actually, her gloss spray would be even better. I should have went and got that. And I'm just going to water this down and do some splotchies on here, some splatter. Now, I needed this to be really dry for them to not just soak right in, so hopefully it was dry enough. Go ahead and put on my pine cones, why not? Okay. We'll see if that even shows up very much. I'm going to set these aside over here, maybe. Clean this up. I have splatter everywhere. It's so funny. I, I did my splatter box for my spray, but there's a lot of other splatter on here. What else? Is there anything <coughs> else fun we want to add to this? I'm just playing here, guys. Or we could start building it. Start building it. Let me see. <laughs> Sorry for all the rotating. I'm going to put these back on here. No, that's not going to work. I want to do a little bit more heating to dry them a little. Hopefully my mat doesn't get too mad at me. It should be, it should be pretty heat resistant, I would think. Um, shoot. Yeah, these splatters are kind of um, falling right into the background, unfortunately. 
they, they are showing up here pretty well. You can see some of them. But I might have to get some of the um, gloss spray out to really add some white splatter. Maybe I'll do that before I finish this card off camera. But one thing I wanted to show you before I'm done here. I'm not done yet. Don't worry. <laughs> Are you worried? I don't know. Here's one with some texture. One thing I wanted to show you that I love to do is take my gold hero wax. Now that I have some texture in this, I'm not sure I'm going to do it on this one or not because this is already gold and the gold wax is my favorite. <laughs> I'll just take a little bit of it on my finger, just like that, just a little bit. Hopefully you can see this, but I just take it in as light as I can, go over the texture. Need more than that. Like here where it's really popped up a little. And that can just really add a little something to all that texture. And that's how I did it on the first one I was showing you earlier. So I wanted to make sure you could see that. That's how I added that, that gold to my texture on that one. And I just like to do that. This one isn't 100% dry, which is a little weird that I'm doing this already. You see that? Isn't that pretty? And now this one, I don't think is dry enough yet for me to show you guys. This is the first one we did tonight. Yeah, it's still tacky. But on this one, I would take, I would do some ink blending all over there, maybe some ink smushing like I did on this, maybe some spray. And then again, I would take the wax and just gently go over that texture to really make it pop. So pretty. I could maybe do a different color wax on this one. I don't know. Should I? Should I get out like the white wax and see what that would look like on at least a little bit of this? What do you guys think? Should I try it? Lori's nodding her head yes. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Oh, this is not even opened yet. Let's see. Black wax. Oh, black wax is a good idea. Hold on a second. Let me find that. Yes. Okay. It's, it's a good one. I'm a scared. I'm scared a little bit because you know what? I could do it on this. I'm gonna try it on this first <laughs> because I don't love this one as much, and I'm okay with uh, destroying it. <laughs> try it all. I know that's the thing. I'm, I'm telling you guys not to have fear with mixed media, but at the same time, when I love a panel, I don't want to completely destroy it. <laughs> all right. So I have a little bit of wax on my finger. This is the black hero wax. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look how that makes that texture pop on there. I do love it. I do love it. And I think it would make my little things that I'm making here stand up a little better against all the green if I did that. What do you guys think? Maybe just up in this corner, I'll add a little bit of it. I'm going for it. I'm a little scared. I'm not, I'm like we were talking about earlier, <laughs> telling Holly and Letitia and everyone not to, not to be afraid. And here I am. Only because I love all this gold is the only reason I'm afraid, but that's okay. It's just a card panel. It'll be fine. And I don't like it to be like, you know, just, um, I want it to be more than just that blob there. So maybe I'll go down and do a little bit over here. You guys think oh I don't know now if I'm sad one thing I could do also is turn my finger off a little 
and take the gold wax now. Am I going to just smear it? I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Now the black, I don't know if you can see it. It's less black. It looks way more black on my on my video than it does in my here in my craft room. Um, but I'm kind of digging that. Kind of taking it back to gold, but having a little bit of that black show through. Another thing I can do with this wax if I wanted to is kind of go around the edges with it to add a little bit of gold along the edges. Um, another thing I could do with this panel too, right now it's a full A2. I could cut it down a little if I only wanted it to be partially on my card. This is really cool. Clean my finger. And let's see, I'm gonna, I think after this is done, I'm gonna add a little bit more white splatter to my pieces, but I don't wanna keep you all here too long because it's already after nine, my time. But let's see, I was going to build some kind of little spray with these things. Like this. And then the final touch that I was going to do on this is another new product that's coming out on August 24th are more message strips. For the holidays. I love our sentiment strips. There's a die that cuts these all out. Let me see if I have it handy here. Yes, this is it. So you stamp it and then this is the sentiment strips die and it just cuts them all into uh, strips really quick and easy. And so I keep them, I stamp them and keep them in a bin here on my desk. That one's bent. <laughs> And so I did them in black and gold. I could do, we wish you a Merry Christmas and I could break it up. Maybe I need it black now that I did the black on there. Let's see here, that's a good one. Let your heart be bright. That could be fun with that one. Or just the we wish you a Merry Christmas, there it is. So that's, um, let's see. On this one I used our encouragement message strips, which I love so much. And it's the same idea for the holidays. And my scissors are right here. I'm thinking I need to, we wish you a, I don't know how much I want to cut this. Maybe a very Merry Christmas. Something like this is how it's all going to come together. So you guys think you like, I think I might put some more splatter on this, maybe on the background as well, and then I'll finish it and post it in the group. But I think I love this. I think this was a lot of fun and hopefully it gave you guys some ideas for using um, Hero Paste in a different way with your background stamps and gave you a little glimpse into how you use the waxes, the liquid watercolors, all the different things. Let me go ahead and go back to my camera here. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think I am good for tonight. I'm going to finish that up and get it posted in the group. And I appreciate you all being here on a Sunday night playing with me. I was truly playing with uh, the things here. Um, that's just how I create. And so I just wanted to show you how I do it, I guess. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. And any last questions before I say goodbye? Uh, if, again, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, if you are on Facebook, I know not everybody is, but if you are on Facebook and want to join us over in the group, it is Mixed Media with Hero Arts on Facebook. But if you don't do Facebook, that's okay. We're going to be streaming every Sunday night unless there's some kind of conflict at 8 p.m. Eastern, and it'll be on both in our group and also on the Hero Arts YouTube channel. So you can watch it there even if you're not on Facebook. But if you are on Facebook, watch on 
Tuesday, uh, Lee and Holly are going to post a Technique Tuesday mini challenge based on what I did tonight. I was all over the place. So it'll be interesting to see what they zero in on and, and post as the challenge. These are informal. We have an album in the group that is called Technique Tuesday, and we're randomly picking winners. There's no set schedule, just whenever we are in the mood. You saw today in the group, Lee um, picked a winner. I think it was Don Brooks Dumb who won a beautiful journal that that was just all Lee. She just picked up that journal and she's going to send it to that uh, to Dawn for just participating in the group and creating a mixed media and posting it for everybody. So we're going to do that randomly here and there, but we're also going to do monthly challenges. And our first one will start September 1st and we'll have an album for that. And you could win a uh, $50 gift card to the hero art store for playing along with our monthly challenges. So if you share on social media, use hashtag Hero Arts Mixed Media and also hashtag Hero Arts. And I thank you all for being here. We'll have another live next Sunday night and we will see you then. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.